you wake up, this is what you gotta do. You gotta crush the day before it crushes you. Every day I'm here to motivate, lead the way in the AM. I don't want you to hear these words, I need you to feel what I'm saying. Oh, no. you gotta crush the day before it crushes you. You gotta crush the day before it crushes you. In the building, Jimmy Wilson, motivation's coming, I can feel it. First thing that you need to do is crush the day before it crushes you. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Drewby. We're back again with another exciting Day Crushers episode. So normally you hear my short little snippets every morning here on this uh, podcast, but I've really enjoyed going out into the community of my friends and family members and inviting folks on who I know are out there absolutely crushing the day, being great examples of what this movement is all about. And today's guest is someone that I've had the pleasure of watching over the last three years truly experience, I can't even call it anything, but like a significant life change. He has gone through so many different ups and downs and different um, situations. But what I love about this guy is that in every time that he's been faced with some sort of challenge or some sort of, you know, struggle, He always finds a way to push through and to keep going, even in his darkest of moments. And so I'd like you guys to help me welcome my friend, Mr. Dave Comley. What's up, Dave? What's up, man? Just out here crushing the day, brother. How about yourself? Same here, man. Just got off work. That's right. And I know before we started recording this, you're telling me you're getting ready to head out for your, you know, I think it's probably your second workout of the day, I'm guessing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, outdoor you know, one. yeah, those outdoor ones are crazy, but it's, it's cool because I've had the pleasure of watching you really dive in and, and have this experience, man. So for the folks who don't know your story, um, do me a favor, take a minute or two to kind of tell us about yourself, man. Well, it all really started probably last summer. Like I started getting to like a deep, dark depression and just like just everything changed because we moved out of another state. Moved in a different house. Just didn't feel like I was, like, worth it, you know. And just falling apart, getting, like, not close to my ex. Well, she was a wife at the time, but just not close. Just kept growing apart. Like, I knew something was up, and I just kept getting darker and darker. And the place that I would always stop at every morning going to work, I would check out the stars. And I noticed that on Thursdays, They put a sign out that says, this park's closed. Go see another park. And they wouldn't take the signs out till Friday morning. So I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm done with everything. Like, that's the place I'm going to do it. I'm going to end it there. Park my car, use my gun, end it, you know? Ain't nobody going to miss me, you know? I shut down. I had no, like, it was just done. So that morning, it was November 18th, I woke last year. Well, 2022. So I woke up. And I went to go let my dog out, and she was just all over me. Like, she, it was just, like, just extra loving and kissing on me, licking, whatever you want to call it. Just all over me. Like, she's never been before. And I'm like, man, she's just a wild beast. And I'm like, I couldn't do it. I'm like, this dog needs me because if I end it, she'll go right back to the pound because the, the ex wouldn't take care of her at all because she's just wild. So it did. So it ended up didn't do it, obviously, because we're here right now. <laughs> and uh, so after that, I just started pulling myself out of the suck, you know, and just like getting better and better and be more grateful about everything. And then at that time, she she wanted to get divorced and it told me that she was cheating and whatnot, and blah, blah, blah. So now from a five bedroom log cabin, my own bathroom to go pooping upstairs and now I'm in a camper, loving life, on 75 hard. I mean, it's the best place to heal ever, you know, except a little bit of rocking, which is annoying, and the power goes out more than I like. But other than that, I mean, I'm smiling now. Like, like I haven't smiled for real in so long, you know. It's just been wild. And, like, I'm so grateful that this all happened now because I, I'm un. I'm unleashed to do become the greatest version of myself now without being feeling guilty. 
that's one of the things that's so hard about those situations in life, right? You have to go through the flames if you're going to be forged by fire, right? I, I started watching this show on Netflix where they make like knives and custom swords and stuff. And it's so oh, interesting yeah. to me how you have to go through like this, this extreme temperature change and this extreme pressure and all of these different experiences to end up this finely tuned you know, just sharp piece of, of metal or, or, you know, whatever the tool is for. And that's what I see happening to you, Dave. I've seen you going down this path and having this journey. And, you know, I can't even imagine what that must have been like to be in that moment and to have those feelings of, you know, just not knowing what to do next, but then knowing in that same moment, there is a love that exists that's it, it, it can't really be explained, right? That Jenny coming up and, and giving you that extra kiss and, and just being that extra emotion. I mean, you can't explain that kind of stuff in the world. And that's what I truly love meeting other individuals like you who have embraced it, who have experienced it, because that is typically to me, what I find is what flips that switch. It's what takes the person who's in that dark, you know, despair of a moment and says, hey, there's something that exists. There's a light, there's an energy, a, a, a source, something inside of me extremely powerful that still needs to be brought out. And that's what I see you doing. You're jumping back into 75 hard. You were saying you're down like 30 some pounds in the last couple of days, and you're just absolutely crushing it, man. And so for the folks who maybe are having that moment where they're just maybe not feeling like themselves or they're feeling a little bit, you know, kind of out of sorts. What kind of advice would you give that individual? Is there anything that you think you could share with them to maybe help them through that moment? I mean, you definitely got to open up. You got to find that right person because if you don't have that right person. You're not going to do it. Cause I mean, I speak a lot about the power of a hug with my buddy at work. He's seen that I was down in the, he's like, something ain't right. Cause I was always cheerful and all that. He's like, I know what you need. This will be real quick. He gave me that hug. And I'm like, man, if you would have held on to me a couple more seconds, I would have just broke down and cry, like lost it. I mean, working on a machine metal worker, union machine metal worker. And like, you don't cry in front of these people. I mean, you don't even show emotions. And I was, so it's like, like that. And they're like, and I opened up to the ex and I broke down in her shoulders and I felt like she was like almost laughing at me even though she said she she never was laughing but I felt like I'm like guess ain't the right thing to do and I couldn't help get myself together I'm like I'll never again and then I just been slowly opening up and now I tell people now I'm like the Diet Coke and a Mentos I will tell my <laughs> story to anybody I don't care you look at me like I'm weird I said you got them same exact thoughts as I did but you're too embarrassed to talk about it and like sometimes I'll get that weird look, like really you're gonna shoot yourself? Like I'm like, yeah, I was done. And I'm like, I guarantee you, talking to some of the guys I work with, they'll break down and cry if you give them about five minutes of talking, because they're all going through the same thing. You know, we're all going through problems. I mean, I was raised to not talk about it, you know. And now that's all I do is open up. Like today in the G Code group, like I I was like, you know what? Let me lean into them, get them to get more engagement, you know. Like, I asked him because I'm like, I asked today, I was like, I'm in that stage right now because we I just passed my 11th anniversary, even though we're not officially divorced, you know? So, like, 11 years is a long time being married, you know? <laughs> Jenny, yeah. And, like, so it's like, I'm like, how, like, how did she fake this whole marriage? Like, she lied, like, the whole time, like, never was into it, like. I just, this is weird. You know, I just never thought that anybody can ever fake anything like that. It's just weird. I mean, it just messes me up because she was really my first person I really cared about, you know? Well, Dave, I think the beautiful thing that I've seen you really, you know, and, and again, I don't have that experience, so I can't speak to it as much, but I think what I've witnessed for you specifically is you embracing this new version of yourself it, it created a situation where you were really growing. And I remember at first you guys were kind of growing together and it was good, but then it reached a point where you wanted to keep going and she made a decision 
to to be where she was and to settle. And it's not to say anything bad about her, right? Like her choices yeah. are her choices. But what I've seen from you, man, what I really love and admire is a willingness to just keep going. Even in your darkest moment, you know, you said, well, give it another day. Just, just keep going because I can't, you know, leave this poor puppy here without someone to care for it because that's who you are as a human. You truly care. I know because when you gave me a hug at MDM, like I could feel that embrace. And that's something that I want to give you your flowers, as Brandon Brittingham says, yeah, and, and I love really that. give you kudos to because, man, there's not very many individuals out there who – are willing to just be who they are and admit they are where they are in life and just be themselves. And you're one of those guys that's just really authentic and real, man. And so I appreciate that you, you really show up and you're always yourself. You are, you know, whether it's online or in person, you're just being you. And one of the things I'd love to hear is kind of what you've, you know, being someone who's also like me, what like was a bigger guy in your life. One of the things that, was real important to me on my day of journey of crushing the day was really like embracing the power of a walk and going out and utilizing that time to like think and to better myself. Would you mind sharing? Cause I know you do a lot of walks and stuff like that. What, what's your experience been with that? Well, I mean, I try to go like hiking at like a good spot, like good scenery, you got the birds. Like I literally hike almost every day where I was going to end it. Like, this place is literally amazing. It's got, like, the best views ever, you know. Some days, I mean, I'll, I'll put some headphones in, but, I mean, most of the time, the, the signal there is so crappy. I just hike and just get in my head, you know, and just think about things. Nothing crazy or dark or depression anymore. Like, that definitely will never happen. If it does, like, I lean in on people. I got my right. buddy Mike, the slot car guy, and, like, he will set it straight so fast. And then like, oh, I'm good. You know, it's like, that's what you need. You need that good group of people to lean in on, you know. I mean, I absolutely love hikes. I just got a new pair of shoes, the new Hoka's. And, like, the, I bought a new pair uh, a couple of weeks ago. I had to return them. They're too squeaky. I'm like, yep, we're done. <laughs> the first time I ever return in anything, I don't return anything. I'm not just deal with it. So I got me a no, new I've pair had of some Hoka's. shoes. Yeah, yeah, so I'm like, then they're awesome. So, like, I mean, I'm all about hiking through the rain, snow, whatever. Like, it's like, it's only five minutes away. It's got perfect hills, you know. Jenny likes it. You know, just today is a little too warm for her, so I'm not going to take her. It's just like, I think, just getting out and breathing the fresh air is what you need. You know, I just Man, I haven't been a fan of the gym at all, you know. I just like it. I'll throw a weight vest in on sometimes. I think the big thing is that people underestimate the value of a walk, both from like a the standpoint of just getting your fitness in. I mean, getting up and moving your body and walking at, you know, 30 to 45 minutes at a decent pace. Like that's one of the best ways to get yourself and your blood flow going. But that introspection time where you can just think and talk to yourself. And a lot of people are weird. Like, I don't talk to myself. Like I have full blown ass conversations yeah, with me, myself, does. the homies, like, you know, I got a whole mastermind of folks up in there that I'm talking to, but you got um, that right. it, it, it is such a powerful thing to, to utilize and embrace that time and that energy. And I love seeing you do that. I love seeing how you embrace just being a great member of our community and Apex and all the people that you're around, man. You are what I would consider a shining light and someone who inspires me to get up and crush the day every day. So before we get out of here, man, I always like to ask, you know, you're someone who I really would consider as someone that crushes the day. If someone's here listening and you can give that individual one piece of advice on how to get out there and crush their day, what would you tell them? Don't bury your feelings. Don't bear. That's not good. You know, you got to open up and, and just speak about it. Even like these silly things, you know, I mean, we all got problems. You just got to just speak up and lean into the right people, which is hard to find. Once you find them people, man, it's great. But I mean, always make sure when they give you the advice, make sure you ask them too how they're doing. You know, just don't be a taker. Yeah, you know? no, no one likes a taker. You gotta give, give her. You know, givers win. You know. But yeah, I love that, don't, Dave. Don't, don't hide your feelings. Hey, I, I would not argue that one bit, man. It's one of those things where most people are taught to bottle that stuff up and to bury yep. it, but. 
the more open you are, the more you communicate being the key word, you have to communicate these things. Uh, it really does make a difference. And as you mentioned a couple of times, getting around the right people, having the right conversations at the right point in your life can really open up a lot of opportunities for the right things to start happening. So Dave, I want to just thank you again for taking time to be here with me, man, for sharing your story, for being such an awesome supporter and example of what crushing the day looks like. And as always, I want to remind those of you who are here listening to, to tune in, share this, man. This is a, a story from a guy who's truly been at that moment and come through the other side and experience what it can be and what it's like to make that decision to become the greatest version, to crush the day before it crushes you. So, Dave, thank you again, man. We'll see you on the next one. I appreciate and uh, everybody else, man, make sure you're out there crushing the day. We'll talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to go back and check out all the previous episodes. Make sure you subscribe share this podcast with other like-minded, success-driven individuals who want to crush it. Check the show notes and grab your Crush of the Day swag over at crushingtheday.com. And remember, crush the day before it crushes you. You gotta crush the day before it crushes you.